What is going on, guys? We are about three minutes away from showtime, so if you're watching this on demand, skip ahead three minutes, unless you just want to listen to Kaga Sands, which is an awesome track, so cool either way. What's going on there, chat? Vandrad came in way early. He's in that green room. He's ready to go. Thorn Deep is in the green room. We got L. Liss already in the green room. Uh, Militus, people are excited about this topic tonight. I'm excited. We'll wait to get into too much till the actual show starts, but I'm excited for tonight. I am super excited. Yeah, well, this is a couple of systems that we can really go into some depth on. So I bet that's why people are excited and pumping in the green room. Right. So, I mean, I guess we should say nerd alert. You, you said that earlier, right? Nerd alert for this yeah. this show indeed. Yeah. You When you have me on, it's going to get nerdy. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and apologize now. So <laughs> it won't be too bad. It'll still be listenable to people, but... <laughs> I like to overthink things at times, so I have a lot of fun. Oh, Chris Kane's in the chat. What's up? Oh boy! Brother? Oh boy! <laughs> Trying to um... All right, so Chris Kane, Theric, what's going on, Theric? Gulu Gulu, what is up? Leno Land, let's get it. Let's definitely get it tonight. Tell me this music doesn't make you, like, ready to go. I don't think you can hear it, huh, Millie? I can't even hear it, but I'm ready to go. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> oh, there's Fire Marshal, man. I haven't seen Fire Marshal in a while. I don't know if you to come by and hang out on the, the Sif cast. There we go. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you down. One more minute till we go live. We're unveiling a new overlay. So I was sick in bed all week. I had to get COVID tested. It turns out I'm good. I don't have COVID. I was just regular sick like crazy. Feeling good for the first time today. But when I was laying in bed, the things I do, like when I'm sleeping and I can't sleep, I just lay there and I think about things like this. And I thought about a whole new way to design an interface for the Pantheon Plus U show. You guys are going to see that in just one minute. I'm excited for it. Everyone's going to be like, what? It's not special. I'm like super excited, though. You remind me of uh, this bodybuilder. His name is Sagi Kalev. He's a big Israeli bodybuilder. <laughs> I lay in bed at night and think about ways to torture my body, you know, to get a perfect uh, a muscle growth. And stuff. <laughs> but you, you lay in bed thinking about ways you could torture yourself to build yeah. better and bigger Pantheon Plus you. That's pretty cool. There you go. There you go. And there's really no better way than to say that. And let's go ahead and start this episode. You ready? Let's do it. All right, here we go, guys. Oh, we're, we're live. We're, we're streaming right now. Cool. Awesome, man. Let me just, uh... What is going on, everybody? Mine is here from Pantheon Plus. I've said that for 42 episodes. And I keep telling myself I'm going to change how I introduce the show. And as soon as it comes in, I can't. I just, it's just what comes to mind. It's what I have to say. <laughs> Militus, welcome. It's consistent? Yeah. Consistent? Good? I mean, it works. I made a, like, when we do a play and pause thing now, where when we stream gaming, we call it play, uh, pause and play. Like, pause for a little bit from creating, and let's just play some games, right? So we made logos for it. We made, like, a little intro video, and it's just making fun of how I introduce every video exactly the same, and it, like, slows itself down. It's funny. But, um, Militus, I am so happy to have you here tonight for this topic, because this is a topic, in my opinion, that we need to get deep, nerdy, we need to think, we need a theory craft on, and uh, I don't think I could have had a better person join me than you. You're, you're the scholar of the Pantheon community. Oh, you know you are. You know you are. <laughs> I try, but uh, <laughs> hey, I love coming on the show. Thanks for having me on, especially talking about these two topics. Oh, Something that, that yeah, I caught the videos you put out, super excited to watch them. And it, you know, every time I would say this to all the content creators, right? Whether it's, we got several in the chat. When you guys put something out, I, I, I just don't know what I'd do without you because you put stuff out and this starts the creative juices start flowing, you start thinking, start getting more passionate. So, man, 
great job doing that. Uh, so I'm ready to talk yeah, atmospheres ma'am. and climate tonight. Well, that's and that's what we're doing. So for anyone who hasn't been following us this month, it's a little different than what we normally do. And, and thank you, Melissa, for those kind words. I appreciate that because that's the kind of stuff that like when we hear from the community, whether it's content creators, whether it's people just discovering the game, whether it's people who've been following Pantheon for a long time, no matter what it is, we do it because we want people to get excited. And it's interesting because if you follow the early days of Pantheon Plus, there was a lot of just opinion pieces and kind of chatting. And I got to tell you that like bringing Ferric in really changed a lot for us. You know, he's such a student of the lore and details, and he makes these videos with quotes and tying things together. He's a lot more maybe factual than we were accustomed to being, where we were much more opinionated. Like we could talk about systems, we could talk about things, but we're going to just kind of go off a rail on him. And he's kind of turned me into making more factual videos. Like we've seen these videos were researched. There were scripts like <laughs> that wasn't how we were in the past. Um, so I definitely owe Theric on that. Uh, he's definitely a right hand man of mine. And now with Drac on the team, uh, you know, these guys have upped my game so much. So I'm actually enjoying making these, you know, shorter to digest like info videos. We kind of stayed away from that for a while. There was a lot of people doing it but we feel like we bring something to the table with it. So I'm happy that you guys enjoy it. Um, the comments on YouTube have been great. So we'll keep doing it. And Theric, I would say to Theric too, like you called me the scholar of uh, you know, Pantheon. I would say I'm, first of all, thank you. But I would say maybe one of several. And I think he's another one of those. You know, uh, I get a big thrill out of his lore. I, I've commented almost every one of the YouTube videos. I remember one of the first ones he did that one of a black rose keep you did when I watched that, I was like sending you messages in discord. Yeah. I was on YouTube. I'm like more of this, please. Like this is good, good stuff. So, and yeah, that video see. hasn't gotten, I mean, it's gotten love, but not enough. That video was crazy. Yeah, and I gotta be honest with really you. Like good. I always valued Theric. Like, don't get me wrong. Like we've had a great friendship for a while and he knows, like I went nuts when he put that out. I'm like, dude, this is insane. Like, yeah, too. like, how did you do that? How did you give us a tour of a place we've never seen? <laughs> like, oh, it was awesome. It was so cool. But I agree. And unique. And unique. Not a lot of people in the community have done. I, actually, I don't know that anybody's done that. Yeah. And so it was so unique and it was a breath of fresh air. It was awesome. So every time you put something out, yeah. I'm always like <laughs> clamoring to watch it. Without a doubt. So a couple things before we start, we're going to get right on topic here so we can get into the green room. We already have three people in the green room. Get into the green room. That's how you chat live with us. Exclamation point discord. It's going to give you all the info you need. There's a, a chat room called the green room. You can mute your mic, mute your headphones and just listen to us on, on here until we pull you in. We'll give you a heads up. The good news is, is there's not much delay on this show versus like me talking right now and you hearing it. It's probably a couple seconds. So we'll give you a heads up before we pull you in and, and scare you into the live room here. But I got to tell you, if you've watched this show for a long time and you've been hesitant to join the live room because you're like, oh, I'm nervous, don't be. Um, take it from all the people who've joined. It's super chat casual. Uh, we're chatting as friends, whether our opinions are the same or not. We're able to chat as a community here and it's a safe spot. So like jump into that green room, come live on the air. It's super fun. Now, the other thing I want to shout out before we start is you guys will see above the chat tonight something new. It's pretty cool. Um, this is a Pantheon Plus wall. Now, this is actually going to be featured on the website when we roll out all the new details that are going to be coming out, when we reintroduce articles and we have a new main page. There's, there's a lot that's going to change all at once. And this is going to be a huge part of our main page. And you guys will see there, if you tweet anything with hashtag Pantheon Plus, images of the games you're playing, something about Pantheon, it'll show up on that wall as long as it's approved by Drac. And you guys will see it on our streams. You'll see it on the front page of the website. It's a way to kind of show people. Oh, it does have to have a picture or video. Thank you, Jack. Um, you know, you put a video up there. It'll play the video. And as you see right now while you're watching, um, it'll shoot over and, and give kind of that that little tidbit that you're throwing in there. It's just a fun time. So no matter what games you're playing, like EverQuest, you see a lot of that up there. We played some Vanguard. It doesn't matter. For the King, anything you're playing, shoot up a screenshot, hashtag Pantheon Plus and be part of the wall. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool for sure. So you can probably be as insidious as you want. Just put like hashtag Pantheon profiles are the best and you'll probably get through. I'm just <laughs> throw, nice. Throw that out there's a plug. Think about that. Anyways. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay. So uh, this, this month we've, we've jumped into the topic of, you know, climates and um, 
acclimation, which kind of go hand in hand, right? Like you acclimate into the climate with different glyphs and equipment and, and you know, there's going to be uh, climates that overlap on each other. There's going to be a lot of decisions to make as a player to take the world and really put it against you. And then the other side of it is atmospheres. And those are really tied to artifacts. Now, artifacts at the same time do look like they can be more than just for atmospheres, but they're obviously going to play in pretty in depth to the atmospheres, um, specifically some of the ones that are more dangerous. So let's start with that. Um, I've said a ton on this. If you guys have watched the videos, I've already said a lot. So Militus, let's start with climates um, in the acclimation. Where are you on that now? Um, what are some thoughts and what stands out right away that about that for you? So uh, climates, as you uh, clearly articulated, they're extreme natural environments as opposed to atmospheres, which are the unnatural right uh, kind of environments. I love all of them, and I, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring a game I'm playing right now into the fold to kind of talk about this. And I hope no one in the chat will come through and like grab <laughs> me because it's gonna. Happen to start with a W and end uh -oh. with a W, but it's 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 the classic version of it. But I, let me tell you, I love climates more today in 2020 than when I first learned about them in early 2019. And I'm going to tell you why. I didn't start playing uh, classic WoW until uh, Burning Crusade. Well, actually the end of, technically the end of Vanilla, but Burning Crusade come out like a month or two after I started playing. So I never really got to experience like the raiding in, in Vanilla WoW, were things like you had to have certain resistance levels, right? So right now I'm in a guild and we're raiding AQ40, just released, uh, gates of Moncourage open and we're raiding. And um, you have to have certain like nature resistance for certain fights. And because of that, you have to farm certain gear. And for 2004, that was pretty cool. That's a pretty cool way to deal with environmental dangers, right? For 2004. But what Pantheon's doing is like taking that to another level. And I didn't think, you know, I've heard people for a long time say, oh, it really sucked back then. Like it sucked <laughs> to have to get nature resist gear. It sucked to have to worry about this fight that had this particular shadow or poison or, you know, whatever it was. Um, but I'm digging the hell out of this in, in WoW Classic right now. It feels good to know, like, like, for example, I play a Holy Priest, you know, Go figure, right? A healer. And, you know, for certain fights, I will carry gear sets that buff me against certain resistances and they're not optimal. I have to carry them on my bag. And I know th this is like a small little parallel to what I think the climate system and Pantheon is going to be, but I dig it. And I like having to be prepared and think strategically. So for me, the climate system lines up with the game tenants beautifully. And, and for any system in the game, isn't that the ultimate litmus test, right? Whether that yeah. system is good or bad, does it line up with the major tenets of Pantheon and which include strategic, thoughtful, meaningful gameplay. So to me, that's that's what all these, whether it's Scorching, Frigid, Windshear, Anaerobic, Toxic Pressure, all these, it's gonna make you think more strategically and possibly carry, well, not possibly, you're <laughs> going to have to carry glyphs with you or, and, and two, I love how you said in the video, uh, Joppa mentioned, no one can have perfect acclimation to all of those climates. Yeah. Like you got to make some choices. Gotta, be possible. gotta make meaningful choices, gotta be strategic. So I love it. I, I, I think, I love it. Again, I wanna make this, I wanna emphasize this. I really thought it was cool back in 2019, but never having played a game that really emphasized, like maybe, you know, like, with, like I said, with Wild Classic, the kind of resistances. But I really feel like this is going to pay big dividends when this game launches because there's nothing out there like it in a contemporary, well-produced MMO like Pantheon's going to be. Well, you just led me into launching our poll. So great job there. So on the screen, guys, you're going to see a poll pop up. It'll be up for the remainder of the show. Let me go ahead and uh, flash that up on the screen. So I'm curious what you guys think. Um, the poll of tonight is going to be how important do you think the climate and atmosphere systems are to Pantheon Rise of the Fallen? Very important is exclamation point vote very important vote important neutral vote neutral not important vote not and remove them vote remove for those people who think oh. that it's a system that shouldn't be there. And here's what's interesting about that, because I agree with you. Obviously, I'm a big fan of these things, and I think it kind of came through in the videos the amount of times I said, like, this is going to be defining. This is a defining feature, right? 
So for me, the the thing that's interesting is sometimes when you hear about these systems and maybe back in 2019, I wasn't as excited as you, if I'm going to be completely honest, like it sounded like, okay, well, we'll see what happens with it. Right. Um, but I was still learning a lot about Pantheon back then. Like I was still learning a lot about everything and how it was going to work. And one of the common themes that you'd hear around climate systems um, or atmospheres was gimmick. You heard that a lot. And you heard that around climate, right? You heard gimmick. These are a gimmick thing, but they're not. And we haven't even dug into climbing a lot as Pantheon Plus. It's probably something we're going to do soon. But these systems are entrenched in the gameplay. They're, they're I like to use the word um, differentiators. Like if you say, what is the thing that could drive Pantheon to being the most successful MMO out there? Which, I mean, come on, rose colored glasses, right? Like we understand that it's it's an indie game. It's It's a niche market. But we do, I do believe it can get into the top five. I do. You know, is it going to ever hit 12 million like WoW did? Probably not. I don't know if any game's ever going to do that. But what's going to do it is something that makes the game different, right? So what makes Pantheon different? And this, this system, starting with climates, is something that makes the world different than any world we're ever going to play in in any other MMO ever, including EverQuest. There's nothing like this. And you brought up, you know, um, gearing yourself up with resistance gear which was fine, that's a small part of it, but imagine traversing the world and just having it on, not just being in a dungeon, right? Um, right. And the cool part is, and, and I love that you brought up the raid, people are going to experience climates at a low level, just in a zone you're in. You, you're not gonna be raiding, you might just be adventuring. And, and imagine you walk into a really cold area. Like, we're going to play a lot of this imagine thing tonight. But imagine you walk into a really cold area, and it's it's like a tier one, right? Because remember, these are going to be in different tiers of danger. It's a tier one. You're kind of, it's cold, right? You're getting hit up with some of the, uh, maybe you just have like one or two of the you know, glacial pace. You're, you're just slower. You know, um, your speed is, is slow on attacks. Your cooldowns are a little longer. But that's about it, right? You're not necessarily getting frozen lungs and all these other things. It's not super cold. But then you kind of like walk through like this big valley, right? And you go deeper down in, you see the winds are a little more dangerous. And as you walk in, something doesn't feel right. You're a little slower. All of a sudden, frozen lungs pops up on the screen. You're like, whoa, I'm not ready for this, right? It's yep. this natural fear. Like you've just stepped into something that I'm going to come back here later, but we're not ready for this, guys. Or you're crazy to like, I need to see what's in here and see how far we can get in. Right. And it becomes this challenge of you versus the world. Like, do you turn around? Do you wait till you're ready? Or do you want to see how far you can get? Is it just a small area that's trying to scare you away from adventuring? Or is it a whole new area that's going to get more dangerous? Right. I mean, think about that. That does that exist in any MMORPG today? No, no, not, not. I mean, in very, very small analogs like i mean really you know don't stand in the poison cloud <laughs> you, you know don't yeah. stand in the fire but 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 not to the degree that the kind of immersion you're describing like that immersion like you said when you look into the valley and you see the the winds and you you start to feel even though it's a debuff right uh, i don't know what the animations are going to look like necessarily just yet it would be really cool if uh, your character did show rather than just a debuff, your character showed maybe some some physical attribute changes. That would be super cool. Shivering, but anyway, or, yeah, shivering or something. Well, the slow walk can be a thing. I think they could easily do. Like with <laughs> you were talking about. Like you imagine like the like hunched over like this type of walking. Like you know, that'd be pretty that cool. That would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. And and I think the here's the best part of the system. I think there is. In, in MMOs today, everything's accessible. Everything's face roll. Everything's, you know, there for you. I, call me old fashioned, right? But I love it when I'm traversing to an area where I'm like, I can't survive here. Yeah. That immediately creates this intrinsic goal inside of me. Like, I'm getting here, damn it. Like, I am going to climb that yep. rock face. I'm going to make it down there. <laughs> and I will go out and farm forever whatever i need just to, to see what's back. around the corner yes yes to get back there and i think that's what's you know this system's got great potential for that because it can create those barriers that they create smaller goals which lead you to other parts of the game and that's what makes a world breathe and live 
as opposed to this very linear you go yeah. from one zone there's nothing really to scare you the death penalty is not that bad so you're not even worried about dying so i i, do, I don't, don't want to stir up a bunch of people getting mad but even you know i i didn't as a, we you and i have had these conversations many times i really wish i had played eq i really yeah. do I, I but i missed it and i missed some of those death penalties i hear people talking about the corpse runs and things and so when when pantheon did announce their their death penalty uh you know a part of me was like oh i've never done that before but that's <laughs> gonna be like but so you couple that with this system yeah that even creates more immersion because you're like if i die here like i'm that's a there's a cost yeah i can't just like get you know, get hypothermia and just say <laughs> f it i'm gonna res at a rest point and come out and do it again you can't do that in this yeah. game so both of those systems they couple together you know they favor each other quite well yeah and, and I think it's interesting, too, you know, um, one of the things that Theric really highlighted in his lore video was the fact of like Joppa talking about multi climate areas. Right. So they talked about the volcano that was scorching. But because of the the way the volcano was, it was toxic. Right. So you had various levels of toxic you're going to have to worry about and you had scorching. And that's where see what I think is important about this system is that it ties into the other tenants so well like don't just look at climates and atmosphere like these two systems that are gonna keep there that act as a keying right because the negativity that you'll see on these and I, and I understand it i don't agree with it but i understand it is that uh this is just another form of keying well mmorpgs need keying you, you shouldn't be able to just go do whatever you want um you should have to fight your way there and you can, if you want to go into that volcano without the gear on, you could go ahead. You're going to be a corpse at the bottom of it, but <laughs> hey, have fun. You, you can go do it. I think that there's a difference between like a, a locked king thing that's like you're waiting for the game to let you do it versus something that is on you to invest in, to invest in your friends. I mean, think about that concept. I go to a volcano, it's toxic and it's scorching. And I have whatever effects are on me because we don't know. We haven't seen what those effects are going to be. But because of your group makeup, you're like, well, you know, hey, guys, if we take this and this, um, I think we can get through the toxic today with our group makeup. So let's go ahead and make sure we're just let's get rid of the scorching because that's going to really hurt us. And you make these sacrifices that further drive class identity, that further drive synergy in your group and in strategy, right? That pre-strategy that exists within LAS, that exists within like how you build your six man group, um, what abilities you're gonna take. And now you're talking about how you're going to adventure. All these things tie together and they help the other tenants greatly. Yeah, I, I so that's I was gonna get nerdy. So just bear with me for one second. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So in college, you know, I remember taking a class in philosophy. It's so funny because we're talking about, um, we're going to talk about atmospheres in a minute. And the way they describe them is, right, unnatural metaphysical phenomena. And metaphysics is a part of philosophy. Anyways. I, oh, I, please, I, no, please, stop, go, sorry, stop, go. Stop, stop. <laughs> so metaphysics, right, a part of philosophy where you study reality. You know, what, what does it mean to be real? What's, what's, the, what's the structure and makeup of the, the real universe or the, 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 of reality, essentially? Anyways, I'm in this philosophy class, and I remember in being in that class, all of a sudden having this epiphany of how science and politics and language and a lot of things tie together. Because if you take a class in philosophy, you start to see how disciplines are not in silos, like they actually intermesh, right, with one, one another. And for me, these two systems, you just said it, they kind of they're like they're 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 that metaphor like they they show how all these tenants kind of mesh together and i want to push back against something you said earlier not not it wasn't yeah, your yeah. argument but that whole argument of like this is a keying system is a I, i'm just it's a naive reductionist argument it's oversimplifying something that really is very complex Right. I mean, you, yeah. you just talk about if you overlay multiple atmospheres, uh, good luck. Like that's a very complicated encounter to do that. So I just don't I don't buy that whole king sucks. And it's, it, 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 this is king. This is way more complex and robust systems than yeah. just saying go get a key somewhere or even like 
the the worst uh and again i don't have the everquest experience but the worst attunement process i ever uh, went through was the karazhan attunement yeah and uh yeah, I remember Crusade. That. they're like go go google it or something if you've never done it before like the process map looks insane but you know what i was having when i was going through all that a lot of fun what the, a stop. lot of fun with a lot of people we're not allowed to have um, fun it, in MMORPGs. Yeah, politics. yeah, no Stop. fun, no fun. And this is way better than that. Yeah. On paper, now we haven't, I haven't seen it yet, and I haven't felt it, and I haven't been in Terminus, and got to, you know, really dip my toes in these things. But just on paper, this is way better than that process. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to see the kind of confusing, <laughs> um, dire situations I get myself into. Uh, with just, my just friends. imagine. You know, with, we, we learned a lot about, I keep referring back to Frigid because we know the most about it, right? Like they spilled the most beans on the Frigid. But that last effect, hypothermia, that's brutal, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's brutal. So not only do you have that, you have something else. So you at least have frostbite, frozen lungs, and hypothermia. What, you have at least two of them to have it, right? And you're just dying. Your damage is going down. You can't fight. Um, you lose health every second, second, and the only way to get rid of it is to basically die or cure it, which you're probably just going to die. So yeah. imagine when that pops on you and you're just like dread, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> guys are running out of time. <laughs> like we got to, we got to find a safe camp. That's warm. Someone's got to find a Can we cure it? We're we leaving. What are we doing? Because like, I'm begging here. I'm gonna beg. I'm gonna beg Joppa for something here since you uh -oh. brought it up. Joppa's here. He just saw. I don't know. Okay. If he saw. Oh boy. He just oh said Milita so said robust. <laughs> yeah, okay. So so, you know, I, I know I, I know funding's tight. I know you guys are indie city and all that, but I'm thinking about this about climates and and I'm thinking about the the way that traditional MMOs have have showed us this right. They've shown us this with with deb little debuff. Uh, icons next to our characters and that's fine that's fine and and that might be all um you know that pantheon can do or vr can do kind of going forward but i'm thinking if if we can have some visual representation of the way our characters react to those climate systems other than a little square next to our portrait man that would be super powerful and yeah. super immersing right uh versus just hunting for debuffs uh, slots i was you know, when I play Classic Wild now, one of the things um, you have to do in AQ40 is mages have to cast onto these big ads in AQ40, um, detect magic to see what kind of powers or, or, or vulnerabilities they have. And so a little square will pop up and they'll, they'll yell it out and raid. Uh, this one's got, you know, thorns. <laughs> and I'm thinking, it'd be cool to see thorns. <laughs> it would be you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. it would be cool to see some visualization uh, visualization of that um that really kind of brings you into that in that setting and this is a perfect opportunity yeah. um i'm not saying I, I, I don't know the financials of it but i think <laughs> it would be so cool like when you get into a scorching right w whether it's just something as simple as your character being like you know like something like That'd this be awesome. or, they're or, just animations right, yeah or, or you get into a fridge and, and they start shaking or the wind shear like i did see some of the kind of when we got to see the sleepless and you know that area the code was being blown all over the place because i could see some real potential there well and they I said during that video that the animations for being wind buffered were not in yeah. so yeah. that was a little hint oh. that we might see that it was said right during that video he said now you're going to see him get blown around but the animations aren't in for that yet which is awesome right so so here's I want to go into WoW for a second, and we'll stay in Classic because people don't get as mad about Classic. So, Molten Core, one of the most... I'm not amusing, by the way. I think that's awesome. Go ahead, right. sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, so Molten Core, right, is is well-known, even for people who aren't big WoW fans. It was it was one of the original things. It was difficult. It was attunement. Um, you re Imagine reading about Molten Core. You're excited to go in. But you go in, and it's like, okay, it's lava everywhere, but really... It doesn't really matter, <laughs> right? Like, don't fall on it. Now imagine if there was scorching in there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's that fear, right? Like, it, we were talking about it earlier, like, being afraid of the zone. And what that does, and what Theric was able to do in his lore video, was to really talk about how the lore is now able to translate into the experience. And that's not common as well in MMORPGs. 
And for that reason, I think you have people like me who coming into Pantheon, I said, ah, eh, lore's not that important to me. Like, I liked reading about, like, the history of WoW, and I had the Chronicles books. So I guess I was into it a little bit more than I led on. But it wasn't a, a factor for me until way later, right? Like, I just wanted to play the game. I know more about Pantheon lore right now than any other game I've ever played, without a doubt. I haven't even played it yet. And to me, when you can take these areas, like the one that was really big, and Chris, you're in there. Um, Chris read that. Um, I know I'm going to forget it. Uh, Theric, help me out. But the um, the one when they were walking in the frigid cold, it was in the first climate video. Um, mm -hmm. right? and, and, he, and Chris is in that video, and he's talking about just like the frigid cold of this area. Like, imagine you're going to feel it. Like, you're going to feel the lore of these areas. And that is tremendous from a gamer perspective. You know, we jokingly... Um, yeah, there you go. The Knight of Five Voices. Um, we jokingly, like, we have a meme that's called Breaking My Immersion. I don't know if you've seen me post it. It's pretty funny. It's like a big sign. It says, oh, no, immersion breaking. Warning. Um, something new is about to be mentioned. It might break your immersion, right? So like, but the simple fact of it is when you talk about lore, lore is supposed to be one of the most emerging things. It's supposed to teach you. Your, there's a history to what you're doing. It's not just what you're doing. There's a reason things exist. And, and tying this climate system into that is massively important. It's not just gameplay, which in itself is ridiculously cool. It's the fact that when you read about the scorching tundra of so-and-so with winds that just you walk in there and you're being blown around and you're sweating and your your skin's parching like awesome <laughs> it's so cool to me right yeah those those stimuli that you're getting as a gamer right if if it causes you to want to know more about where you are and why it is what it is that's good game design, right? Like that, it, that's good game design. Uh, kind of going, going back to experiences of that, it, you know, I, even to minus uh, disapproval, uh, you might've seen, I changed my Twitter uh, handle to from Militus the devout cleric to Militus the curious druid, because I think that's, that's where I'm headed with Pantheon. Early experiences I had in Teldrassil in World of Warcraft, I walked Teldrassil for months. Okay, that zone's like to level 12 or 14 yeah. or something, something yeah. like that. Months just staring at trees and wanting to know why why is this tree so tall? It I didn't even know I was on a damn tree. I'm looking <laughs> at other trees and I'm like, why does this forest look this way? And why are the why are the creatures just treating me this way? Why why are they docile versus other places? And I wanted to go out and read about it. And at the time, it was like discussion boards. You got to read about the lore. This system, this is taking that to another level. Because so, like you, Moat Core is a perfect example, right? Because yeah. when I think about it, <laughs> you should freaking melt. Yeah. And you just walk in with your, minutes, your bikini your body on. Your should just melt. No, your no. Your body me. should physically <laughs> melt. Like 15 minutes in Moat Core. You can't walk 15 feet from molten lava and not have the... <laughs> Heat, something just just, to put, just melt your body right there that doesn't make sense so <laughs> so something like scorching would would change that so <laughs> i'm gonna read get. this because japa uh put a, a nice little comment out here kind of referring to some of the stuff you're talking about so he said uh, it's hard to watch a game in development you should see stepping stones of functionality and visualization and even our internal testers can be like so is this it trust me the system will be immersive not only visually but in the way the effects are manifested on your character in at least three ways, screen effects, vis virtual, uh, visual and sound effects and animations. So there you go. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Joppa. That's inc and the screen. I didn't think about the screen effects. You know, you know, who did a good job of that was Guild Wars 2. Guild Wars 2 has some pretty cool screen effects. I'm mm -hmm. not sure if you ever played that much, but um, but like if you <laughs> jump in the water, like the water would splash all over the screen effects. It looked kind of realistic. That's great. So screen effects, visual, oh, animations, and sound. Oh, that gets me so pumped. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to see it in person. I can't wait to see it in person. Oh, that's awesome. Man. That's awesome. Thanks, um, Joppa. Thanks for that. Appreciate that. It's awesome. Um, I, I, I have to say, though, I'm going to throw a challenge to him right oh, now. Oh, geez. Challenge him. How do you possibly animate pressure? Because 
the definition of it is just tissues are moving inward. Is that's the definition like I found? <laughs> collapsing, <laughs> collapsing alien chest or something. That that would be really odd. Your but, face uh, I, I, starts I, I, thinning. Like yeah. <laughs> start to see the bone <laughs> architecture. <laughs> The Indiana Jones melting face effect. Yeah, so I'm curious to see that one, Joppa. That one's going to be a hard one to pull off, but I think if anyone could do it, you can. But uh, the pressure one would be interesting to see, for sure. You could really do a lot through sound effects, though, with pressure. Like the way oh, the yeah. sound, like that could be, like the way the music or the sound around you starts to like, like, oh, that could be really cool. So we've spent some time talking about climates um, and, and the acclimation side of it. Now, keep something in mind, too. It's really important. Everybody is very familiar with the fact that glyphs are going to be a big part of getting acclimated, right? But so is gear. And I think that that's important because if you're only using glyphs, you're not going to be able to really do much other than like maybe max one out or split it between two. But gear can be your difference in trying to combat one or two at the same time or, you know, being able to push yourself over if you don't have the glyphs. So you're going to have gear. You're going to have player buffs, you're going to have natural attunement, and you're going to have glyphs. So it's not just this system of once I have all the glyphs, I'm good. You're going to have to farm gear. You're going to have to mathematically decide how you want to do it. And then you're going to have to tie your stats in. Because now that you're using glyphs and gear, it's like, hmm, what stats am I willing to get rid of? Because I need to wear this gear piece, right? And then it also starts playing into like however your stats are going to affect your limited action set. Like... There is so much theory craft and math that you can do that I think is going to people fear math because they think it's meta, but there's going to it's meta is going to be very difficult to have. Like, OK, if you have this piece, this piece, this glyph, this glyph, this guy in your party with this spell, then you should do this. How many people are going to be able to do that? <laughs> right. It's almost Even like the websites will have a difficult time building yeah. out you know, algorithms for that. Like that, that would, that seems to be, and then too, there's going to be so many of them as a player. Do you really want to like talk about breaking immersion, right? That's, there's nothing more game. In my opinion, there's nothing more immersion breaking in a game than me having to go out to, I'm going to go old school here. Thoughtbot or <laughs> wow. Wild, wild nope. Right. I don't I mean that that's really, yeah. immersion breaking and so if you can have so many possibilities yeah. that basically it negates that that effect that would be yeah that's that's gonna that's be cool. really cool and you didn't mention something glyphs can break yeah ouch and talk about like so they announced like the legendary glyphs won't so how cool are those gonna be to farm like those are gonna be so popular that's how another thing rare exactly yeah are those gonna be defined like you said cool and i yeah. and I, I agree with you i think it's gonna be super cool that's but if point. i had to guess I'm point. guessing that's not something you just find all the time. I think that's probably going to be a pretty rare. All right. So, so, so one of the reasons that we went and did this month the way we did is because I think personally, and I don't want to speak for you guys in chat, but tell me if you agree, you know, climates and acclimation really took the center stage in this whole system, right? Like we didn't, we got the details in a newsletter on atmosphere and artifacts, but to, in my opinion, they fell by the wayside during all of this. And I think that now, looking at both systems, it's a very important thing to, to understand the differences between them and how they can also function together. So let's get into artifacts a little bit, but I do want to read this because you, you brought this quote up. So I want to read a quote from Joppa really quick here. Um, and it kind of talks about what the differences are from the development side, like his theory, and, and it's probably the best way to look at it if you think about it. He says, while climate deals with the extremes of natural phenomena, players will encounter in Terminus, for example, atmospheres will present players with unnatural metaphysical phenomena, the kind of phenomena that might occur when fantastical worlds collide. And that is super important to me, right? So I go to Amber Fate. It's a tundra. It's freezing. That's because that's what the part of the world is. But now we step back and we say, because of collisions, here's this crazy thing you got to deal with, maybe on top of a climate. And we were able to show a small one in the video where we showed them fighting Nashera, where he put up a spell reflect atmosphere. He kind of created his own. But we're also been privy to gloom, right? And gloom, and we put a, a Twitter uh, video clip out um, after the videos. I wish I would have put it in, but there was a video of them discovering gloom area. This is from a stream a long time ago. 
and I didn't find it until after. And it was just the sound effects, the the atmosphere that you heard, the gloom was present. It wasn't just this mist. It was, there was a change in the music. There was a change in the sound, the crows around it. There was just really ominous, like, what do we step into? And they, that's one of the ones we know the most about is gloom, which is sort of like an undead manifestation, right? It's this, uh, what it does, just to read it real quickly, draining your mana. So imagine you're a wizard and you're in this gloom area and your mana is draining. Um, reduces healing effectiveness. So now your hots aren't healing as much as you're used to because of this undead atmosphere around you. And it increases the damage that's inflicted by undead against you. So you're less healing, less mana, and you're taking more damage because you're in this area that has been, you know, despair, right? Like gloom, right? Um, and then on top of that, all the undead around you are stronger than normal undead. Um, their aggro radius is bigger. They sense you. Um, imagine that. And it's not a large area. You can't, you know, you can wear like a special artifact and negate some of it. But at the same time, your acclimation gear is not going to matter when you step into this area that's filled with undead. And all of a sudden you step in the wrong area and all these undead turn and they're like, who are you? Why are you here? And it's another reason where all of a sudden fear overcomes you, right? And I mean, give me a little bit on that. Like, what, what are your thoughts on this? These pockets that we're going to find within the world of dangerous atmospheres. Yeah, it's, well, first let me say that uh, while you and I might be very fearful of these gloomy environments, I have a sneaking suspicion that Bazgrim and uh, Nathan are going to be like <laughs> very happy. Paladins, uh, yeah. Paladins, right? <laughs> like they're going to be probably more equipped to deal with some of those areas with undead than, than I would. Uh, yeah, I mean, let me say this first. I love the dichotomy of natural versus unnatural and i think you know for a lot of players they're gonna see cold and it's gonna make sense they're gonna see scorched earth it's gonna make sense but what won't make sense to them is when they walk into an area with darkness and utter darkness someone says and i say as a druid oh don't worry i'll cast this i think there's a spell druids have where they can cast like a, a insect that lights up and nothing happens <laughs> or someone says well i'll get my torch and nothing happens like we're still in this very unnatural you know just human experience we don't have any frame of reference for that yeah nothing like and can you imagine discovering that not knowing it's going to be right. there like like you walk into any other dark that you think you'd be in right like okay guys i you know so and so you have a torch right bring it up pop it up did you pop it up did you put? Uh, do, did you put your torch? Is he AFK? Where's he at? Cast again. Cast it again. <laughs> and you find out, like, uh, guys, um, light's not working, and it's just that whole realization over everybody. Like, <gasps> where are we? <laughs> you know. And you know, zones, zones have a and and dungeon zones, environments in MMOs cap. You know, when you first walk into one for the first time, right, it's just mesmerizing. You're you're just you've never been there before it's amazing and and i feel like over time for me that tends to fade when i play in a zone for a very long time but what this system possibly offers is for me at least a remedy to that right because i can walk into a, a familiar area let's say that had an atmosphere of heavy air or frenetic floor fog of confusion and now all of a sudden i am my frame of reference is shattered because what's happening is these metaphysical very unnatural effects are happening to my reality and it's completely changing my frame of reference so think about that right the all these beautiful zones that they developed which all of us are going to love exploring and and really getting to learn but this can this can serve as a way to mix things up when Even you when you play a game, up. so I was recently playing Hellblade. Did you play that by any chance? I did not play Hellblade. I, I think you'd I like it, that, especially because okay. the psychology side. I think the whole game is based on psychology. Um, mm. It's very very in depth, like about mental disorders, and it's pretty crazy. But there's a scene, and there's a scene in a lot of games like this where you're walking across a plank, and your character's like, oh, and you're looking down, and it's real far. Yeah. So I have a fear of heights. Now I can ride roller coasters, like, I, but I'm never jumping out of a plane. I'm never looking over the edge of a building. 
and in that game, I literally got like a sense of like, I got sweating. Like I started sweating. Like it was, it was really intense, like to go through that scene. And when I was through it, I, I realized I was like not even breathing, right? Like I was like holding my breath for my character to like walk across this plank so I didn't fall off and die. Now think about that in Pantheon. Like for those people that are afraid of the dark, and that's a pretty common thing. You go into you this know? area and you tell your friend to put the torch on and you're like, okay, like I'm good right now, right? Like I'm good. Um, you tell them to put the torch on, you're ready. Okay. We're going to be okay. And you're not. And then there's going to be people out there that literally start to have a real natural uneasiness when you cannot see. And Joppa just said this <laughs> to add to this. He said, what kind of creatures would live in absolute darkness? Imagine the things you'll hear when they start to find you. <laughs> right. So, so in that video that we put out there about that dark atmosphere, he talks specifically that you may need to listen to get through it. We're now talking about an audio experience where we've lost our visual ability and we're listening for audio cues to get through this darkness and where we need to head. We're hearing something coming. It, 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 unbelievable sense yeah. of dread for, I think, a lot of people that are afraid of the dark. That's a, that's a common phobia. Um, so imagine that and then not knowing what's coming at you, that uncertainty. Hey, there's oh. nothing phobic about it. That's rational, my friend. <laughs> like that's rational. That's that's human nature. We we evolved out of that. So there, that that fear is there for a reason. I don't think that's necessarily irrational. Hey, two two things. Quick story. So, yeah. Star Wars: The Old Republic, right? Um, if you ever played that game, uh, they had these data crons uh, all across the world that you could you had to find, and they gave you like you know extra power or whatever. But they put them in very difficult to reach spots, and some of them were like up high and <laughs> i have i have a lab at, at, at where, where i teach and um i do physiological psychophysiological experiments in this lab and so for fun one semester i had students come in the lab i had them play star wars the Old republic and uh They're like the best the teacher day. ever <laughs> yeah it was, it, I, I was like to have fun you got to have fun in a classroom <laughs> So we, we were looking at like anxiety response. And so I said to them, um, do you think anxiety response carries over in virtual worlds to any degree? Like it does in the real world. And they're like, no, 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 it's a video game. I'm, okay. So I put them in Star Wars Old Republic. And I had them walk across this beam to get one of these data crons. And it was really high above the city, right? And so as they're walking across this beam trying to get to the data crone, they're using the mouse and keyboard, just like you and I would play an MMO. But on their right hand, on their ring, on actually on their index and ring finger, I had GSR sensors, which are galvanic skin response sensors, and they measure <clears throat> very precisely how much you sweat. Hmm. And people, two, three steps out, I'm I have my machine in another room, and I'm watching the data come in real time, in in like graphs. And they would take a couple steps minus, and you would say tick tick. You would see the tick up in the GSR <laughs> and they would get out over the beam. And not only would it tick up, I have to clean the lab when they're finished, right? The mouse, when I would go back to clean the mouse, there would be sweat on top of the, that's awesome. the mouse. So, so one, that's a cool story. Two, after this whole pandemic thing's over, Joppa, I'm just saying, you know, if you got any material, you want me to run through the lab. I could put some tidbits <laughs> in there and uh, we could, we could test out some of these cool atmospheric effects uh yeah but uh, that yeah i think all of these certainly could cause that that spike right in uh right one of my favorite psychologist is robert sapolsky if you guys have never read some of his work he does a lot of work with stress response and with video games is a really good example you know roller coasters are great right you, you ride a roller coaster you get a bit of stress and it feels good it makes you feel uneasy and it scares you and things like that but no one rides a roller coaster 185 times. Like, you know, there, are, <laughs> there's a limit to which the stress and the anxiety kind of become, uh, have a, has a point of diminishing returns. These systems, atmospheres, I mean, think about it. The kind of that stress that they can Im impose on you in, in terminus, whether it's heavy air, fog confusion, whatever, that little stress will just cause you to, immerse further into the world so so, so what yeah, do you so they have the silencing mist we can kind of understand is probably going to deal with like casting like a spell yeah that's what i was thinking like a spell <clears> right promise. so fog of confusion i have no idea that could like could it switch your targets could you accidentally hit your own people um Here's you lose control of your character what were you thinking 
what if what if they manipulated the WASD keys where you walk into this fog confusion and you're using W and now W walks you to the left. And oh then, yeah. <laughs> That's good. You'd, you'd be like a drunken fool walking all through this foggy area. And then you couple that with maybe some environmental hazards, you know, you could easily fall off a ledge, fall to your death. I mean, there could be lots of different. Yeah, if I accidentally start stabbing the elves in my group, it's foggy confusion, guys. That's all it is. It's a total mistake. <laughs> um, so this is great here. So um, someone said uh, I was a uh, Shuck Shucklack said the trick to keeping it creepy though is even after you've done it a thousand, you know, the thousandth time, how does it stay there? And Jop had a really good one. He said that's actually easy. You just simply combine absolute darkness with shifting walls. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Like you can just imagine you turn around and your friends aren't even near you anymore. And you're like, uh, so that's, and that's funny. You brought that up. So shifting walls, heavy air, um, curse of intangibility. Mm. Like, like things that were once very, you know, meta were very real and physical to you. Like that's no longer, I, like do your weapons no just all of a sudden you can't grab them. Like, I, <laughs> There's the, the, these things that make my mind run so much because we don't know a ton of them, right? Um, but like frenetic floor. So, so the definition oh. there is that, you know, this frenetic floor. Chaos. Yeah. Chaos. Like the floor is no longer tangible. What does that mean? <laughs> like, do, you know what I think of? Do you remember Nightmare on Elm Street when she goes to climb up the stairs and they turn into goo and she like just gets stuck in each step? <laughs> is that like frenetic floor? Is that what's going to happen? Like all of a sudden you're running and then you just like, it turns into like slime and now you're slow. Like, guys, wait for me. I'm stuck in the frenetic. Yeah. Floor. I always think of like chaotic energy that is just like, it, it, it's, 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 it has no direction about it. You know what I mean? Like it, you might have this chaotic energy surge one way and then a second later, it's another way and all that's beneath you. Yeah. So, so yeah, try, try to traverse or try to demonstrate your skill <laughs> at the same time you're trying to make it across. A, a, an environment like that or sorry an atmosphere like that that would be really difficult yeah really difficult so and the best part is if there's ever a bug in the game that causes you to fall through the world Joppa could just be like oh it's just frenetic <laughs> floor. blame it on frenetic <laughs> it's <laughs> frenetic <laughs> floor it's intangible <laughs> um so and we're gonna jump into the green room here very shortly we still have three people in there thorn deep i know you were in there earlier jump in we're gonna get into that very very soon but i do want to talk a little bit through the artifacts so we know of we actually know of six artifacts, but I only put five in. So one is called the Bone Veil, um, and that apparently negates gloom. So that's mm -hmm. the extent of what I know about it. I didn't, I didn't put that one in the video, but Joppa talks about that in one of the quotes that he put out there that we read. So Bone Veil is is the sixth artifact that we know of right now, and there's probably more out there that I've missed. But the ones that we definitely know about through. Um, Various different things. I, one was a Discord message. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was a VIP one. So I'd ask Joppa. I'm like, hey, can I use this? I don't think this is knowledge to people. Can I use this quote? And he, he gave me the thumbs up. So like, that's where we learned about the boots of the five feathers, which are exactly that. The effects of frenetic floor become solid for the wear. So there's a hint, right? Solid for the wear mm -hmm. versus whatever else it becomes, right? Um, so that's cool. The Crest of Illumination is awesome because we got that tidbit in the old video about the darkness, right? And this says the Archai Crown, which is imbued with a powerful resonating light source that can shine through the blackest darkness. Now, keep something in mind. We're talking about boots and we're talking about a crown. To me, that means you got to have it on your head or you got to have them on your feet. That's what it looks like to me too. Yeah, right? So these aren't yeah. just things you carry. They're things you wear. So you're now making more in, decisions. In certain situations, right. Exactly. Right. In exactly. certain situations, you would wear them. Could you imagine if you went into the darkness and you tried to pull up your inventory and you couldn't see it? So like trying to figure out how to put your boots on became like a struggle, right? Like, cause like you can't see anything. You can't even see your inventory. You can't see in your bags. That would be interesting. Um, we had the ring of that's anchors. Why, that's why you plan and you put on your crest of illumination before you enter that place. Yeah. So that yeah. Hope it doesn't just it. hope it doesn't just sweep over you, right? Um, so ring of anchors. Um, it allows you to sink to the deepest reaches of oceans, so you can walk on the surface. On the that's. It's gotta be I, when I was okay, first. I'm thinking breathing. Yeah, that's uh, so you're that. gonna you're gonna have anaerobic. 
Without a doubt. But then I thought about pressure too. Because <laughs> yeah. when you fall, and I know that's a climate, not necessarily. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Sure. But when you fall to a depth in, in a body of water like that, the pressure would kill you. Yeah, unless so, you're a dark mirror. I'm, right, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, unless you're a dark mirror. Yeah. More reason to pick dark mirror. Um, we had the Skyhold Grappler, which I definitely want as a rogue. Um, so it helps you avoid I, with advanced terrain traversement. So you can see, like you just brought up, I know that that's a climate. These artifacts don't seem directly forced into needing to just work with atmospheres. They're working like this one's allows you to just traverse better. You know, not only climbing, but now grappling, then climbing, using saving some endurance possibly to use this grapple first and then use your climbing skill. And then, of course, Shield of Mirrors, which basically reflects light and has a chance to reflect magical attacks when blocking. It's a tank. It's great, right? For a paladin or a uh, for a paladin or a warrior. So really cool stuff there. As long as you're not fighting a big boss with a two-handed mace, right? Well, one that would cast things at you. I'm yeah. just thinking like if you were in that if you were had that shield equipped in the wrong situation, mirrors that wouldn't hold up very well against a yeah. big mace blow. But with magic name it's worked great. Uh, you know, big kudos to uh, to VR just in their naming scheme because I love it whenever like these things I will remember them. Yeah, you know, I, like I remember certain items that are named well. <laughs> All of these just have like a staying power to them as I hear them. So yeah, uh, Shuckluck said, "I wonder if certain races will be better suited for some atmospheres or climates." Yes, they will. Um, now it's not going to say that they're just going to be immune but they will have advancements in their natural acclimation possibly. Um, so that's important as well. So um, let's see here. Um, okay. So you want to go to the, uh, you want to go to the green room here and start pulling some people in and getting some, some yeah, feedback. Let's do it. All right. Let's talk. So we're going to go into the green room. If you're not in there already, jump in. We have plenty of time for the green room tonight. So we're first going to grab Vandrad. He's been in there for a while. And then we'll go to Ellis, then to Tech Ninja, then to Coco Mojo so far. So jump in plenty of time. So as uh, we said, Vandrad, you're in first. What is up, sir? How are you? Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Good, good hey, man. Vandrad. What's up? Good, man. Oh, my God. This is the one thing about Pantheon which I am completely excited over and I have nothing bad to say about. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, so what is it? I mean, is this something that you've always been excited for? Is it as it's grown and you've learned more? I mean, yeah, as it as it's grown, I have learned more. I mean, back in 2013, when when they started having initial discussions about what was going to happen, um, you know, the thing was, you know, the situational gear, and they brought up the fact that they wanted the world to be something you had to deal with, not just the creatures in it, um, and that built into the you know the situational gear and you know and this other stuff. And I was like, yes, I want the world to be something that I have to be aware of and notice and react to um you know on a daily basis everywhere i go i need to be mindful of where i am and what environment i'm in and it has only gotten more detailed over the years so i cannot wait to see how this is going to pan out yeah i am i are you a big lore guy typically vandrad not really uh to me lore is fine and dandy but in the in the day-to-day -day applicability of it it never really comes into play so eh not too much into it yeah does this help you get a little more in um no uh, but it, it's <laughs> it's it's just helping me appreciate that you know this idea that they had come up with you know worlds not games you know, Brad is building worlds. Well, this is them building a world. And I'm just, yeah, I want the world to be an actual living, breathing world. And when I started, when they first started thinking about this, you know, and they gave the, uh, the short list of some of these, my mind immediately went to, okay, what are all of the possible permutations and combinations you could <laughs> possibly have to deal with? You know, think about a desert environment, okay? During the day, it's going to be scorching hot. What happens in a desert at nighttime? Yeah, it's it freezing. Cold. It yeah. gets freezing cold. So depending oh, upon so the cool. time of the day that you're going through a desert, you may have to bring along two pieces of gear, two sets of gear. 
That's awesome. Because you're going to melt during the day and then freeze during the nighttime. So which which one is something is going to be more difficult to deal with? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Bring up a really good a good point, and I, I just want to bounce this question off of you. So you think about, like, you're talking about the desert at night. It gets cooler. With um, atmospheres, like darkness, gloom, heavy air, frenetic floor, all those things. Like, we've seen an example of it in a fight where a boss generated gloom. How do you feel about a naturally, I'm sorry, natural is the wrong word when talking about atmospheres, <laughs> an unnaturally occurring instance of, let's say, one of these, like out in the world, just shows up dynamically. So, you know, one day you cross the stream in Old Wood, everything's fine. A month later, you cross the stream and the fog confusions. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. It's simmering across the stream and so you look at it and you're like that's different yeah, and you absolutely. enter and because think about okay so tie it to you know some event some occurrence some npc some change in the world that has caused this to happen you know it, you know uh undead have you know somebody had come through and you know they found this you know old fortress or whatever and there was a bunch of undead and it's surrounded by gloom the fact that there are undead there should increase the amount of gloom in an area and when you clear it out that gloom should dissipate when they all come back if nobody clears it for a while it should just keep building and getting darker and darker and spreading further and further not to an entire zone but it should become more and more prominent in an area over time so imagine this um, in WoW, sorry guys, in WoW, like when you killed an Exia, remember her head would be in yeah. the storm and say, imagine you kill some kind of like undead lich lord or something, and it sets the undead into a frenzy in the world. Now all of a sudden, because some raid group killed this mega boss, gloom is like right. everywhere. Like the undeads yeah. at unrest, um, you know, like, okay, this great thing happened. Congratulations. But now the undead are really upset. Um, you, know, you can tie it into, let's say, a faction. Okay, so you know this this particular lich, um, you know, has a bunch of undead minions are all around the world that are kind of, you know, under his faction umbrella. He dies, and they react to it. Yeah, it's awesome. The, see, the, the the thing, the beauty of these two systems, right, is what the three of us and everyone in chat is, is bringing. It's these infinite possibilities of, for creativity by developers. With That's only with part. only a few systems. Like Right, exactly. Think about yeah. what it becomes in the future. Like in the future, like right now, I think they said we may only see like two at a time. Like we're not going to get crazy with it like at the beginning of the game, which makes total sense. But imagine when it becomes three in the future during an expansion or when a, you know, a seventh, you know, in, uh, climate comes in. I mean, as far as atmospheres goes, as soon as you make a new enemy, they could have a new atmosphere. Like that's the key to that, or right? Just think about, you know, having to go from A to B. You know, you could actually have to cross several zones. Each of them has different atmospheres and climates involved. And if that traverse is difficult enough and long enough, you're going to have to be prepared for that crossing. You know, it, I, it reminds me like Conan. Like, Do you remember in or, Conan when yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. running through all the areas? <laughs> Right, yeah. Or, you know, I think back to, um, you know, Shadows of Lucklin, you know, from EverQuest, where you got to the Grey. You know, in the, in the, when you first got there, it was like, okay, I need Enduring Breath just to get to, you know, Straw Temple or to get across the zone to the next one. Imagine if you go from a vacuum zone and then you have to go into a cave system, which then takes you into a, um, a toxic environment and further down below that you end up into a pressure zone so as you go up vertically in the world you get closer and closer to vacuum and as you go deeper in the world your dungeons and cave system should naturally be increasing in pressure and i think that if a if they have a natural application of these atmospheres and climates that they match that they make sense in the world Dealing with it is going to be a uh, much easier on the player base. They're going to go, oh, yeah, this makes total sense, you know? And again, and like it, with what you just said is perfect, too. Like, 
I think everybody would hear about this without knowing what Pantheon was all about. Like, oh, it's cool end game stuff. It's not. It's like level ten. You're gonna be hitting this stuff. Like, well, no, you know, I mean, and level, that's what's cool. It should be level one. You know, yeah, just yeah. because you're in Throne Fast doesn't mean that you could have a cold snap someday. Yep. You yeah, know, and I think that's what's if, cool if is stick to you know calendars and that sort of thing. You know, rain and whatnot. There should be you know a drenched or a uh, you know or something like that. There should be multiple effects for different types of you know weather and environment. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, and the thing too we didn't even really jump into is imagine boss fights. I mean, you throw a boss fight into a climate who does just a crazy atmosphere that just totally contradicts the. You know, environment you're in right um it, it's there's there's so many layers to make innovative raid fights by using the core systems of the game and i don't know that any other game can say that either like wow designs based off of like mods that are out there like they know dbm is going to happen so they have to design these fights around these player driven styles of fighting and they have to come up with these new concepts and stuff but literally just layering systems on top of one another like, imagine you go through that volcano, right? That scorching, toxic environment, but you get into right. the boss room and the toxic's gone, and you're like, oh, sweet guys, throw on your scorching. And this sucker somehow turns part of the fight into frigid. And you're like, what's happening? <laughs> right? Uh, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably go against the whole frigid inside of a volcano thing, but it, it could unnatural, be a... Unnatural well, phenomenon. Yeah, it could be unnatural, but mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, there are there are also other options that he could throw, you know, yeah, of course, of course. just throw another, you know, a loop into it. He could turn it into a vacuum. He could turn it into pressure. Um, you know, he could up the, you know, let's say the uh, the the atmosphere for that, you know, is is scorching, but it's only like let's say a tier mm, three scorching. That's a good idea too. And yep. you fight him, and he ramps it up to a tier four. You know, that's a that really dragon, good you know, that fire dragon there, he's breathing fire stuff all the time. That atmosphere should, you know, that that climate, that atmosphere should be ticking upwards that entire fight. So if you take too long, you mm. go from a two to a three to a four to a five. You know, you're going to have to think about, you know, how fast do we push this? You know, is it a DPS race? Is it not a DPS race? Yeah, it's interesting. It and you know, too, <laughs> you know, too, guys, a lot of uh, games I've played, uh, you know, raiding has got to the point where they just throw very unna unnatural, strong. They, they, they throw very asymmetrical mechanics at you that make no sense to the world that you are supposedly living and breathing. That's a great in, point. Right. And so this system has the beautiful symmetry of, well, hey, I remember crossing that stream and seeing fog. You know, I, I remember seeing that gloom mist on the floor. Like I, I've seen this before. And so it, it, it's, it, it creates the, kind of this beautiful symmetry where they don't have to like reach into this bag of uh, gimmicky stuff and throw it at you in a boss fight. Rather, they can use the things that make Terminus alive in and boss think about fights. That, think about that. how atmospheres can play into the time of day. You know, undead, I believe, should be much more dangerous at nighttime. Their effects that you deal with should be stronger at nighttime. So what if you go into a ruin that has undead and it starts to get dark, if there is a gloom effect, that gloom effect should ramp up significantly because they're now in their element. Or if you but have an artifact... Daytime, you start exactly. to to take it away, right? And yeah, you, you, you could have it. something that you know that counters their effect. Um, but you know, during the day, the gloom is less. At nighttime, oh, it gets a little bit difficult. So you got to think about, hey, you know, we could handle this during the day. Oops, starting to get nighttime. Okay, let's take, a, let's take retreat. a break. <laughs> yeah, retreat. We'll go fight some wolves over here. <laughs> hey, these wolves look good. Well, Vandrad, awesome, man. Thank you for you so much good content right there. So I appreciate it, man. I'm happy to hear how excited Anytime. you are, man. I'm happy I to am, hear that. I am very excited over this one, and I am very much looking forward to testing the living heck out of this system. <laughs> wow. Not only are you excited, you're actually watching your profanity on stream. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you're and welcome. <laughs> All right, Vandrad. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. You're welcome, you sir. Know. Bye. Bye. All right, we're going to bring in Ellis next. I think the first time Ellis is going to be on the show. So, Ellis, we're bringing you in. It should be any minute now. 
second, actually. Ellis, welcome to Pantheon Plus U. How are you? Oh. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Ellis. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. I was like, I was in the middle of conversation. <laughs> yeah, that usually happens. I'm going to be completely honest. We usually grab someone who's in the middle of conversation, bring them on the airline. said you they, like, uh, I think one one people in there said, you up? I am. And then he goes, oh, oh, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? What do you think of these systems? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I, um, I don't think it should be, like, like, okay. They have, like, different tiers, like the high tier and the low tier. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't think the maximum tier should be in the base in the, at launch. I think they should like scale it down. The maximum should be they have at launch should be like one down, two down, and then save the like a very very extreme comments for future expansion. It's That's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. I mean, you still so have I to like acclimate, have, like, right? Was, yeah, I still like have maybe, maybe like one down from the most of the zeros at the at the worst or whatever. And then, like, oh, this ice um, event's happening. Then, it, then suddenly, some part of the world gets really, really cold. Like, say that for a future expansion. Don't have that. Don't have it as, yeah. No, it makes sense. I mean, think about it. We're all going to be kind of building into it, right? We're all going to be discovering it. And we're going to have to go farm these artifacts that we don't know how rare they are. Um, Joppa, I don't know if you want to throw in some kind of verb in front of rare for us to give us an idea. Um, but is it super rare? Is it mega rare? Are they rare? Really, really rare? I don't know how you'd say it, but Joppa, if you have a way to kind of let us know how hard these artifacts are going to be to get, that should make it exciting. But I agree with you. I think that we need to, you know, I think if you push it too far, he said no spoilage. Um, I think if you push it too far too soon, then it's not exciting later, right? Like if if we're hitting max tier at level 30, um, then max tier at level 50 is not going to be as cool. So I think that it definitely has to progress. I think you're right with that. I think that, you know, we should start with low tiers that we're navigating through and trying to figure out. And then later on, all of a sudden we're up a tier. Okay, how do we deal with that? Then we start to see the combined tiers, maybe at low levels. Just building yourself up, because if we hit a maximum tier too soon, I think that it's going to feel like it's not as exciting later. I think when yeah, we well, hit that first max tier, it should be like, oh, crap. <laughs> like a max level at launch, I think it should be extreme and like really hard to deal with. But I don't think it should be the ma maximum difficulty they have planned. I think that this is it for later. Yep. Wouldn't yeah. hurt. Could, you you could you could you could also um you know put it in like the most insanely difficult encounters, right? Um like the the top for the base game, the top raid encounters. You could you could save, you know, just for that far. So yeah, you yeah, could yeah. you you could save them so that you would have to be at the very pinnacle of competency and skill oh. to see them. Oh. So oh, I know Another idea is like have a um, have like a rare spawn, this like, like like an amber fade or whatever, and have a really rare spawn. But if they show up, the area around them is colder than the rest of the area. That's awesome. And if you fight, yeah, that would you, be super. And you cool. fight on me, is like you have to I can make one more just to fight them, this mob one around the area. That's awesome. And I, I just want to be the druid in the trees watching the first person to see this rare spawn. Run and just run go up. completely <laughs> hypothermic and die. Like that's, <laughs> just that's, on the run that's to my them. dream. <laughs> just just to uh, watch it happen in real time. And you just be, whisper them, "Don't worry, I got your, your res. <laughs> you got your res." Based, buddy. On you, based on what you said earlier, I now want to jump into the volcano just to see the animation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think just hearing about the atmospheres and climate, right, uh, Ellis, is just. I'm willing to makes, sacrifice it makes death. Us all want to jump into the I, game. I it? am willing to sacrifice death to explore, even though there's a penalty. Like that's where my mind is. That's why I'm playing a rogue. I, you, you guys watch the streams I do when this game launches. It's probably going to be half the time minus trying to sneak into places he shouldn't be in and dying a lot. And I'm going to love it. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> 
Well, Ellis, thank you so much for uh, your debut uh, jumping in the green room and on live. I appreciate it. I hope it wasn't too bad. Uh, and hope we see you back. Oh, yeah. See you later. Take Bye. care. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thanks for jumping in. Bye-bye. Awesome. Love having a new person jump in. Everyone's always a little nervous to get in, but once you're here, it's easy, right? Um, okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to bring in uh, Tech Ninja. So Tech Ninja, if you're ready, we're bringing you in. Tech Ninja, welcome to the show. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> hey, Tech, thanks for joining us. So what's going on? What do you think of the these systems? Where's your head at with, you know, how important they are? Not just like how cool they sound, but like, do you think these are going to be things that make people check out Pantheon, that they're going to be these core elements that make it different? Um, where's your head at with the systems? Oh, he's muted. You just muted uh -oh. yourself and you uh, hit your mic. So Tech Ninja disappeared. He was good. I heard him for a second there. There he is. He's back. <laughs> I did there's, a, there's a repeat back. happening here. So like I'm, oh, I'm mute, trying to like... Mute the Twitch channel. Oh, good God. Yeah, mute Twitch and you'll be good. <laughs> it's like oh, being on the radio. God. I do it all the time, Tech. When I'm running this. <laughs> do it all the time. Don't worry, brother. All right. So that's where it goes. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. So, like, I'm looking at it from a completely different perspective than all the chat tonight. Like, I'm a PvP guy. All right. <laughs> so, uh, how's all this atmospheric situation going to combine to me and engaging the environment at the same time that I want to nuke somebody off a cliff? All right. You know, so, like, I'm a uh, World of Warcraft BRD Shadow Priest want to mind and control you off the side and drop you into lava yes, that's what i want I to do it. to you so like <laughs> when do i get the opportunity to do that with me and you playing this game right now right so like i've seen me trying to jump like you know i'm gonna jump to ledge to ledge and the winds might block me off but you know when i look at this game on a way i see it has to provide for me especially when i look at the lore it hasn't given me a lick of what i'm going to experience as a player yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, that's you're right. It's... I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm absolutely excited to see where this goes. Now, what do you think of like, could you imagine you're in? So let's talk wind shear. We've seen wind shear, right? In the sleepless fight. So just imagine this wind shear kicks in your platform jumping. <laughs> Extreme darkness. Boom. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> Terrifying. Like, I'm not moving, guys. Like, someone better put on a crown or find a way to light this because I am not moving. But you might be being blown off the edge and you're not even sure. Like, can you imagine that fear of, of wind pressure, like the wind shear hitting you in darkness? Oh, my gosh. What What are you planning on playing, Tech Ninja? Or have you, you have an idea of what class you want so, to play as a, as a PvP or? Main is Cleric. Hmm. I want to be okay. able to heal my way out of things and... You know, as far as I understand the way the dynamic goes, uh, everything is going to run at me as I go towards the zone edge. And, you know, uh, I'm sorry to say I'm not that good of a player, so I'm going to be running a lot. I'm going to be running a hell of a lot. Uh, so I want to make sure that I can make it to the edge and heal myself along the way. Um, it's something that i need to learn you know i uh it's a new dynamic to me that everything's gonna chase me wherever i go uh so cleric is ultimate choice because i'm gonna be able to survive it that's what i think well i was just thinking you know you're talking about like how the atmospheres how they really get you excited as a pv player because if you have a profound understanding of the atmospheres and how they impact certain classes that makes you devastating oh, right because could you imagine like, luring them into dude, uh area what what if you, what if you lure oh, okay so so the, the nuke dps in the game right we're talking wizard right they, they, they just nuke you down right what if you lure them in to a silencing mist oh. and you take your cudgel and you walk up and you smash them in the skull <laughs> even though you're a cleric right you just, because you walk up and you just hear them with the well, searing cudgel right I mean, in the you're, face you're bringing it up like should should uh individual player actually influence 100 percent of the zone's atmospheres at any given moment like say you're in a pvp battle but you're not in the pvp battle you're just sitting around your quest in your camp in whatever you're doing and then all of a sudden some greater fights happening amongst you and some dudes like i need shadow right now boom and everything goes dark 
or like a druid can isn't there the ability with druids that they can create a storm or something like that it, even that so then there's just the leaves yeah it's more of a kind of a knockback but i yeah, thought there was be. actually like a storm creation maybe i'm crazy oh no lightning they can cast lightning is that mm. what you're talking about no i thought that they were able to actually control the storms maybe i in chat tell me if i'm crazy but i could have swore there was a, something but joppa's laughing by the way he said searing cordial to the face i love it um <laughs> but no i mean that see i'm not a big pvp -er. people know that but what you just said tech made me like made me like oh man because you imagine some freaking elf wizard is chasing me around on my rogue and i like i'm like i'm gonna die and i lower him like you said into that silence and he doesn't know yet because he's chasing me, but I get him deep enough that I, he's not going to be able to run. So I get him real deep into that and I turn around and then he goes to kill me. And I'm just like, mm -mm, not today. I stealth, I go in and I wreck him. Oh, the greatest feeling. I kind of want to PVP now. <laughs> okay, see, I was about to say the same thing. Tech, actually, I think he just like swayed me because <laughs> I was straight up going to play on a PVE server, right? I had no... But when I start thinking about the possibilities, like if you really know the atmospheres and you know classes, man, you have such a, a, a an advantage over a player who doesn't know those systems as well. Um, and yeah, that would be fun. Oh my god, <laughs> Tech, it, great it, point, it, man. It, it depends on how long it takes to get there, man. Atmospheres <laughs> and climates, uh, getting your acclimation getting ourselves ready to do those things that we just had the imagination for, you know, may take a fortnight or two. Yeah. Yeah. But Hey, that's part of the fun, right? The journey is for me, at least the journey is just as much as fun as the destination. So, um, yeah. I look forward to ju just getting the acclimation, getting ready. So you might've made old Milla Milla an actual PVP -er. So <laughs> at least yeah. for a few days until yeah. I get wrecked. Yeah. Until, I, until I rage quit and go back to a PV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tech, a great point, great perspective. Without you coming on, we probably wouldn't have got into that PvP perspective, but that's awesome. So good stuff, man. Be well. All right, take it easy, man. Thank you. See you, man. All right, we're gonna bring in uh Coco Mojo. He's been on for a bit. Coco, I'm excited to hear from you. Here you come. What's going on, Coco? How are you? Hey, how you going? Good, man. I haven't talked to you in a bit. Uh just, you know, the C word that can't be mentioned. Yes, yes. There's a lot of C words, you know, I'm about yeah. to say. That's definitely one of them, though. Um, so, <laughs> what's going on? How do you feel about uh, climates and atmospheres? That's a C word we can use, climates. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's interesting. I, I'm kind of neutral about it. I don't know exactly. I mean, I can dream up ideas of for days on end, just like you guys have been doing, and uh, about how it's going to work and stuff. But, you know, actually seeing it. In, in action is what I would like to see. I've seen the wind shear stuff. Uh, I'd like to see like bosses maybe changing the environment on you mid battle or something. Like you get like a fire mage that then turns into like an ice mage or takes an ice level and turns it into like a hot area or something like that. Yeah. Maybe that'd be cool. Maybe getting bonuses like your who does lightning druids or shamans or mages. I, I don't know getting a bonus like that and like the storm i think they hinted towards that before yeah but, uh yeah druids druids in a storm they actually just linked yeah. it druids yeah, yes it's call lightning it's a high single target offensive nature dps last checked it cost about 30 mana range is 20 meters and it's 100 so, more damage in a storm there you go so he, here's your passive though so faded <laughs> emperor just linked um storm warden passive ability it is said when a druid is present they become the heart of any storm. While a storm is active in the area, you will receive X percent bonus to the healing and damage you deal with abilities outdoors only. So it's kind of like bringing your own atmosphere with you whenever you have a storm, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So nice. Yeah, There's so an epic ability where you can actually get that benefit indoors too. Mm. I'm kind of curious how some mm. of the other classes, like the generic warrior or priest or something, are going to. Are they going to have any bonuses with environment or anything like that? It's actually a, an interesting point. Or if they're just going to keep it to what makes sense. You know, I think what yeah. makes Pantheon exciting to me is that class differentiators. Like, it's 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 funny because I can say openly that it's risky to have classes needed, right? Like, to go to a fight and say, like, we can do it without a druid, but we have a druid. We, we should have a druid in this fight. Or we should have an enchanter. I'm okay oh, with oh, that. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Like... <laughs> I'm a class. I'm a classic WoW Retribution Paladin. I'm, I'm nice. As try, I'm as try hard as you can get. <laughs> All right. 
I'm I'm going to go and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to try to break this game. Find every every like little nook and cranny I can sit there and get every squeeze, every little little stat point I can. Because I fucking love that about these games. That is too. Sorry. I love it too. Oh, you're fine. Oh. Yeah. We have the uh, Nathan Napalm thing at the beginning. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, as, as far as this climate things goes, it, it, it so far to me from what I I know about it, it seems like it's just going to be something to farm to put on your gear to get those legendaries or whatever, and get that on you. And then it's not really more than a second thought after that. See, I think or the only be, the only or it may turn into a tedious thing if you have to switch between them all the time. Yeah, but I do think it's so certain things are tedious regret. and it's okay to me, right? Like it's it's interesting, right? Because like Java's openly said you'll never be able to fully attune to two atmospheres. Yeah. So you might be able yeah. to fully attune to one, but as soon as that second comes in, you're gonna have a decision to make. And I think that that's where it's important and that's where the group makeup really matters, right? Yeah, well, my biggest worry is, like, if I have to sit there and I have to collect, like, all these things, I have to keep them all in my bag, and I have to sit there and, like, go to, like, the menu that opens that up, and I have to drag them into the bag when I want to do the next thing, or do I have to travel to a certain area where you have to, like, swap the swap things in and out, and all this stuff, like, or is it going to be something where it's just open a menu and I can swap them out? Your glyphs are going to be menu-based. So your your base, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But where where are the glyphs kept? Are they kept in my inventory? Do I got an Do I got an inventory? They're in an the interface. So there's an all, in, so all of it's in just one interface. Yeah, there's gonna be. We didn't see it, but Joppa made a comment on this. So in the acclimation uh, interface UI, there's mm -hmm. there's gonna be a bag for your glyphs there. Um, now glyphs can break. Keep that in mind. But you can keep all your glyphs in that bag and be able to rotate them in and out. Um, so okay. from a glyph standpoint, you're fine, but keep in mind that glyphs alone aren't going to be what does it. There's going to be buffs. There's going to be gear. So you may have a few pieces of gear that you swap on and off to kind of try to get that, you know, we're going to, we're going to stop frigid, but you know, I'm going to have a little bit of danger here with pressure or I'm going to stop pressure. Like, uh, you can't take like the John Snow cloak in the middle of the freaking Sierra desert kind of place. Exactly. And then the thing too is, is not only are you putting on a piece of gear, are the stats on that gear good for you or are you using it purely for acclimation? So your character may become weaker to make that decision to wear that cloak that maybe that cloak is has a stat on it you really don't use. But at the same time, you're like, I don't care because I need the acclimation right now. So there's going right. to be these really important decisions, I feel like, depending on how the gear is made. So. Yeah. It's, it's, there's, there's going to, it's going to be, there'll be a tedious nature to it, but the strategic side of it to me, is what I'll enjoy greatly to be okay with some of the tedium. Yeah, ba balance the... Well, it's not the tedium of having to like swap them out. It's the tedium of organizing my bags. That's what I'm most worried about. But I didn't know about the bag thing. Yeah, that's just for glyphs. Yeah, which will, right. That'll alleviate a lot of, a the lot of glyph, issues. The glyph pouch, yeah. as Minus referred to it in his video. Yeah. Which, you want to hear a funny story, guys? Sure. Prepping for the show, I mentioned your glyph pouch, and my wife, who's a total non-gamer minus, said, "Is that a sexual reference?" <laughs> Great. <laughs> I said, "No, it's not, it's not in any respect." A you gonna start reference. using that one with your wife and all this? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> oh. Next, next time, oh. man, just go on and say yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just say yes. Say yes. yes. What is the it's old Ghostbusters thing. quote? If they ask if you're a god, you just say yes. Say yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, Coco Mojo, it's good hearing from you, man. Thanks for your Thanks, feedback man. there. Yeah. I love it. Have a good one, guys. Take care. All right, we're going to bring in uh, Thorndeep next. So, Thorndeep, if you want to unmute and uh, put your headset on, then we'll go to Aza, and then we'll wrap up with uh, Drac. So, we got a good we got a good green room going tonight, Millie. You good? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm good. Got Let's a few more it, minutes? I'm having a great time. Yeah. Right. Of course. We got Thorndeep coming in now. What's going on, Thorndeep? How you been, man? Hey, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Sorry, I knew you were in there good, early, man. but me and Millie are going to talk a bit before we get to the green room. That's kind of a standard. <laughs> no worries at all. So what do you think of this? I mean, you've been following Pantheon for a long time. Um, you've known about these systems for a while. We've recently got more info on them. And I think a lot of the info was, I mean, it was really distributed through the years. It was a comment on this stream, a comment on that stream, a newsletter here, a newsletter over here. 
Um, I hope that like tying it all together, even a veteran like yourself was able to kind of learn something or remember something from the content we put out there. But what are your thoughts on all this? Uh, ever since I've learned about the atmospheres and climates, I've always been a really big fan. And just the more I've learned, uh, the more excited I've become about the, the whole thing. Um, the content you guys have put out of, has been awesome. I mean, the way you all tie, you tie it together and lay out the information has been really, really great, even for someone like me that has, you know, followed and knew it already, just having it all there in one place uh, to go and see it is, is, has been great. Um, but for just the reasons that people have talked about, um, I think it's such a, a great way to add immersion to the game. Um, and what you've talked about, King, uh, I, I'm not a, King's never been a problem for me, but I feel like this is such an elegant solution to, to that, to, to King. Um, there's nothing worse than, you know, you try to go to his owner and you say, you're not level 25. Like, <laughs> seriously, you know, I can't go in here because I'm not level 25 yet. You know, that, 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 to me, there's nothing worse than that. So this, you know, you can try to go in. Also, be, my understanding is that there's going to be many ways to get your, you know, acclimation up. So it really leads to... Um, gameplay that will evolve as players find different ways to get into areas that they may not be able to normally. You know, maybe you don't have the glyphs, but you know a druid friend or a, a shaman or something, they give you a buff and someone gives you a crafted thing. And so you, you tweak it in all these different ways to be able to survive a little bit into this area. Um, so I, I think that lends to a lot of really interesting gameplay that, you know, we, we can't anticipate yet. So it's, it's also interesting, right? Like if you have to put on certain gear, it's, it's going to indirectly affect the power level of a player who has to sacrifice pure power and stats optimization for access. And that also does incredible things for making encounters more difficult or challenging the player more because you're not just hitting them with damage. You're not just hitting them with slow. You're hitting them with a decision to weaken themselves to progress. Right. So now you, mana, you've, let's hit points. you've yeah. dampened the player for this yeah. environment, which is really cool in my opinion. But it, And then it also just goes to the importance of player choices. Uh, yeah. You know, making each choice you make more just more important yeah. um one thing I, one last thing i wanted to bring up in terms of like the extreme climates i i have no problem with like there being a climate that no one is able to you know in the first expansion to get through it's like there's an area that you know you're gonna have to wait till expansion three yeah. to, to <laughs> to actually get access to, you know, it just gives you something to like, keep going back. Oh, gosh, darn it. We can't get in there. Yet, Who holds you know? the record for the, the deepest they've made it in before dying. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. You just see this line of corpses, you know, towards the door <laughs> and they pile up because no one's able to get them out yet. And then, you know, then finally when, you know, years down the road, you're able to actually gain access to that. Well, how exciting is that? You know, so I actually <laughs> agree with that. That's such a great point. That's such a great point because in an age in 2020, in an age where there's YouTube for everything, I feel like curiosity is at a premium. Yeah. Like, like it's it really right. Right when you think about it, even MMOs are no different. Like the, the, curiosity and inspiration. You can you can foster that <laughs> by, by having these these environments that are atmospheres that are so deadly that you just have to wonder. You just have to kind of be what's curious up there. What's there? Right. Yeah, what's exactly. yeah. what is what? And then you have uh, it's almost like um you guys get into TV shows. My, my wife's a big Walking Dead fan, and you know they have all these uh, talking you know, talk shows, podcasts, whatever else about. It. What, you know, at the end of an episode, what's going to happen in the next episode? And people, I feel like 
people enjoy the curiosity and the speculation, I think more than they do the damn show sometimes. <laughs> yeah. to be, to be honest. Because it never and lives it, up to all the speculation, well, all these insane right. details. Yeah. So can you can you do that in, in Pantheon and Terminus uh, with these systems? I think you, you can. I think you can create a lot of that same curiosity and speculation and pontification all by kind of creating areas that are so deadly. <laughs> like you said, minus who who took thirty six steps before they died. <laughs> World record yeah. holder. <laughs> yeah. Um, the funny part too is like um, I think this is something EverQuest did. There were enemies you couldn't kill in EverQuest. Like when the game launched, you couldn't kill them. They were unkillable. Um, and I think that it just it like there were these groups that would try, they would try, but they wouldn't get there, right? And I think things like that are important. Like. Why are we able to overcome everything in this dangerous world? Why? Like, why can't there be things that's just like, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah, can't do it. Nobody can do yeah. that, <laughs> you know, yet. Um, or maybe it's some massive puzzle that we're not telling you how to do it. You have to figure it out. It's going to take years. Like, that would be crazy. So, there, and, and tie it in, you know, totally get off subject with the keeper system. Like, yeah, just, it would be awesome. Awesome for stuff like that. Yeah, the possibilities are just amazing, and it's very exciting for sure. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Thorn Deep, thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. That's thank a great you. point. All right. Have a good night, guys. Take it easy, man. See you, Thorn. All right. So I'm going to bring in Aza. Aza, you're muted. So as soon as I see that unmute go, we'll bring you into the room. Um, and when that's over, we will finish up tonight with Drac. So Aza, you are next if you're ready, as long as that mic goes away. There he is. Here we go. Azal, welcome to the show. Uh oh. First you time. Hear me? Yes, hey, we can. Hear you. What's going on? Oh, fantastic. I'm uh, improvising on a phone, so it might sound a bit rubbish. But you actually sound good. Yeah. You sound very good, oh, actually. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, what's going on? What are your thoughts oh, on this? I, I've not got much to add, really, except um, I'm really excited to add in the idea of levels back into the RPG here. <laughs> uh, Something that I think is missing from a lot of MMOs is um, the idea that you go into the ice level, the fire level, having stuff like that, uh, especially with the platform system that Pantheon's going to have. Yep. I'm really excited to feel like, you know, something that was memorable from Dark Souls was going through a nice forest and then getting plunged into a horrible swamp. That's a good point. Because yeah. now, because the zones aren't, there's not a lot of meaning behind the zones that you don't, yeah have those moments of like it's not even it's a wonder i think it's the best word like these moments of wonder it's not always mm -hmm. dread it could it could also like it, it happened very seldomly in wow but like i remember walking into zanger marsh for the first time and being like yeah. what is this is absolutely beautiful all, right? the, all the water effects and the glowing mushrooms and stuff and you just you felt like you'd absolutely transitioned into a different world mm -hmm. yeah and that doesn't happen a lot but you're right like like going to the ice area right and and let's not forget something really important this mmo is is a deep fantasy mmo uh, it's pretty sci-fi like at the end of the day the fact that the way terminus was made and that it's this astral thing like these planets colliding the the possibilities are and they've they've made it to where they have this retro fantasy medieval mmo rpg that's not limited by what would limit that type of an RPG because they have this science fiction style background. Like imagine an expansion, like I know they've done it in other games where you go to different planets, but it felt weird, right? Like in EverQuest, you go to the, to Lukeland or wherever. And you're like, why this is weird. It's like another planet. Or even in WoW, when you went to another planet, it's like, okay, like it's kind of weird. Like Jen, I didn't feel like they fit right away. Like that whole thing right. was kind of weird. Yeah. But in this game, like it's totally like, physical realities that are different you know time travel you could happen in this because this planet is chaos <laughs> like you know well, just yeah, with darkness especially alone especially with um especially with all the stuff that went on with the uh deicide war and the gnomes tinkering about with stuff and that yeah and uh even even looking at streams you could see other planets in the sky and i like my first reaction i was watching uh, i think it was black rose keep and, you know, somebody looked into the sky and I'm like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff going on there. And it's close up. It's not just stars, you know? Yeah. Yep. I mean, and you see that when you're when you're doing the sleepless fight, 
you saw, mm. I guess you were, I don't know, was that Terminus that you were looking at? You were outside of Terminus during that yeah, sleepless that fight? Was, there's something being seized by a big cosmic yeah. energy hand thing. And yeah. it's, you know, you it just spikes what you were talking about is the, the curiosity. You're like, why is that going on? Can I go there? Can <laughs> yeah, I affect can I, that? Yeah, like, exactly. Can I please go there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks horrible. Can I, can I go please? And not only can I go there, where am I? Like, where am I? I went through a portal. Oh, yeah. And, and where am I? You know? Exactly. And, like, one, like, I'm a huge fan of environmental death. I think it's hilarious, but it's also, like, um, I think it adds, it adds so much death. Like, I, I haven't died much in MMOs to the environment, but it happens all the time in, like, platformers and such. And, you know, it really makes you want to try harder next time or be better. And it, it adds a bit of mechanical skill. And I think movement's really, really important to like make a game feel good. So the environment system and how it's placed and acclimations, if wind blows you about, if you slip around on ice, that's gonna really like add that to It's awesome. I love it, man. Thank you for coming by and sharing. That was yeah. oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks for being part of the show and you're welcome anytime, man. And you sounded great on the phone, so good job however you did it. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much thanks for having me take it easy okay. all right so we're wrapping up with Drac, and that'll be it for tonight so let's bring Drac in see what he's talking about what's going on Drac? how are you i'm doing excellent hey Drac. what's going on Miltus? good man how are you love my profile dude awesome awesome if you guys are listening watching whatever you've not got a pantheon profile uh Man, hit my man Drac up. He does an excellent job. And I even, even did you see my profile, uh, Minus? Did you see this? No, I'm not looking at he, you being a druid. He, he like gave me special treatment. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> he did. He took my. He took my. I saw my it. art. And, yeah. Well, not my. Not that I painted or drew it or whatever. But he used my specific art to make my profile. So, so I did see feeling it. Feeling pretty special, man. I'm feeling pretty special. At least you're not an elf. You were a human, right? <laughs> I was human because I told him I gotta go old. You know, I'm old militus on my Twitter handle. I'm I'm aging and approaching, you know, <clears throat> another decade here <laughs> soon. So I thought I would stay human. Old human. Okay. Well, I'm really glad you liked it. We're actually moving the Pantheon profiles to the Pantheon Plus site. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, uh the we're gonna add that to the website. It's gonna be super fun. Yeah, a lot That's exciting news, man. That's exciting news. Yeah. So what's up, Drac? How do you feel about these? We've we've talked in the background a little bit about these, but not incredibly. We've all been kind of working on our own things here at Pantheon Plus. So like, what do these systems mean to you in the overall entire concept of Pantheon? I love it, man. The very first Pantheon video I watched was the one where they crossed the bridge and mm. the screen just kept getting colder and colder and colder. And I just thought that was such an amazing idea. Um, and, you know, uh, climate and resistances and stuff like that, it's not a new concept. I remember, because uh, I'm a big EQ guy, uh, you know, I remember playing EQ back in the day and I could get enough um, cold resistance and uh, magic resistance where Vox, the dragon, couldn't fear me and couldn't cast on me. And I could just sit there and take it. So that type of stuff, obviously, Pantheon's expanding on. But that type of stuff was really cool back in the day. And I think it'll be really fun for Pantheon, too. Awesome. But, yeah. Jack, what did you think? Would you not agree? Like, earlier I was making, you know, I, I'm with you. Like, of course, I'm classic. Wow, that's, that's the resistances are a thing, too. But, like, this, to me is like next level it's like imagining it's it's reimagining the mechanic in an mmo in 2020 that can captivate you and keep you on your toes like the atmospheres and climate i think are way more i'm gonna say it again job a robust and complex <laughs> than just you know than just simple resistances oh Would yeah you agree sure. with that oh no for sure like they're taking it to the totally next level i think it's one of the big risks that Pantheon has taken, you know, where, you know, where the, not a lot of different MMOs are doing this. This is one of uh, where Pantheon's kind of placed its flag in the ground and said, we're going to take a big risk on this. We're going to try this um, and we're going to see how it goes. And that for me, man, that just makes me so happy that an indie <laughs> studio takes a risk, right? I mean, am I alone that just been literally it's been like decades 
since yeah. someone le- legitimately like took a risk in an MMO and and. And the best part is they're taking a risk that isn't trying to just appease people. They're not doing something that's going to include everybody. They're doing another level of challenge that's going to define the game. Another level of, hate saying this, immersion. Another level of connection to the lore, to the world. And another level on that tenet of a dangerous world. You know, those that's the key. That's, That's why these are so important. That's why... We did a month long special on because these literally tie in to nearly every tenant in some way. And I think that that's why we don't want to sleep on these. We need to understand it. It's, it's, uh, I think mean, it's huge. So, yeah, I mean, we're all sick of playing the same MMO over and over yeah. and over again. It's so tiresome. We're ready for something new. I'm ready for new systems. I don't want an EverQuest clone. I want something new. Yep. Go in. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Jack. Well, we're going to end it there. So I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming in. Good. Thanks for having me, Thanks, guys. Jack. Take it easy, dude. Take care, brother. Hey, yeah. I, want, I just want to make one more point, mine sure. about, about what he brought up. And, um, you know, all of us in the community, I know I get this a lot. I'm sure a lot of people who are watching, listening, get it. They'll say, like, I've seen a couple comments in the chat tonight. Uh, is it beta? Is it here? Why can't I play it? That That's the, that's the, when I say I'm a big fan to, let's say, people I play WoW with, they'll say, they'll ask me this questions about Pantheon. Um, and what I just kind of had this insightful moment thinking about as Drac brought this up, and you too, Minus, is uh, what I need to say to them uh, when they ask about systems and why is it not out and all that, is I need to bring up what we talked about tonight, to be honest with you, because um, I need to say things like, are you familiar with atmospheres? Are you familiar with climate? Do you know how that seamlessly ties in with the tenets of the game? You know the developers are sticking to those tenets. Like those things should be they should be so important in the way I think we address uh, people who have questions about the game. Um, because if they have that understanding, I think that changes their perspective. Right? I, I feel like at least that changes their perspective um, about maybe indie development and the length of indie development and what they're trying to get here. Uh, so anyways, I had that no, I moment. I think, I think that that's, I'm going to rely more on those kind of rebuttals. Um, when people ask me those kind of questions moving yep. forward about the game. And you know, there's, there's also a group of people and, and listen, I, you know, on this show, I don't sit here and tell people they're wrong. I'll disagree. That's a different thing. Disagreeing and telling people they're wrong. You're allowed to have your opinions. And there's a lot of people out there that think, you know, Hey, get the game out. Don't worry about all these new systems. They say you're too small of a team. They say, you know, these systems are too hard to take on. You can't. These are the core of the game. They're not gimmicks, guys. There's things that, like, caravan system can come later. Progeny can come later. There's a lot of things that are in this in the pipeline for Pantheon that makes sense to come later, right? Because you, who's going to use Progeny in the first little bit, right? Progeny is going to be for like getting to max level, you know, maybe close to it, doing something with it, you know, starting a new character. That's not something you need at launch, but you need to go into a climate at level. Like, like I said, 10 and Vandra's like, or why not earlier? Level five, level three, you walk into the cold. <laughs> I was like, hold on a second. Give me more than two abilities before you throw me into uh, some of these, some of these uh, uh, environments, please like, give me three or four or five abilities before you do that. That would be helpful. Listen, you better heal. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Um, I'm sure as a druid, I'll have a heal early on. Probably not. You're a druid. Um, you make <laughs> little plants come up underneath your feet while you walk, maybe. Um, but they heal you. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll give you that. All right, guys. Well, listen, I want to say thank you. The chat has been on fire. You guys have been incredible tonight. We've had 40 plus people mostly the entire the night. Really cool. You guys have been really interactive in there. The green room was awesome tonight. We went through, I think, six, seven people in the green room. We had two first timers come into the green room. Thank you for that. Everybody is welcome. Don't be afraid to come into the green room to jump live on the show. No matter what your opinion is, even if you hate me and you want to come at me, you're able to do it as long as you can be respectful and don't get get us kicked off Twitch. So (laughs) you can come on, we'll chat. That's what Pantheon Plus U is all about. And as you guys can see, thanks to Joppa and the different VR members who are in the chat to answer questions, to, to be a part of the community. It's what makes this game phenomenal. It's what makes it exciting, community. And you guys can see that that's what we're trying to do here. And that's why we welcome you on the show. Militus, 
it is always awesome to have you on shows like this. Me and you could probably do a 10 hour show and not blink as long as we can get up for beer. <laughs> Yeah, we were damn near late for the show because we're having such a good time talking in the pre-show. No, hey, it's always a pleasure. Um, hey, I love being able to, to to engage with the community, and I just say I think it's special, uh, and I think it's something that people underappreciate um, that the developers uh, jump in and chat, and and that's that's just uncommon. You know, that just doesn't happen. I've, I've, I've watched a lot of MMOs uh, in development, and I've even had close ties with some studios, and I've never seen the kind of interaction that, that we get from VR. So, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I had a great time and love to do it again. So anytime you, you need a nerdy, <laughs> robust take, you just... Let me know and I'd be happy to come on. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, thank you guys for taking this journey with us. If you haven't checked out our videos about this, we do have three videos out there. We did a video every week. We did a month long coverage of climates and atmospheres. You can get a climate video, you can get an atmosphere video. And then we also have a lore video taking all of these details and, and taking you around the world in only the way that Theric can to put you through some of these environments. So if you want to dig in, check it out on our YouTube channel. You'll see all three of the videos. Um, Absolutely enjoyed doing this month long. Enjoyed pointing out this amazing system that I do believe is going to be a differentiator for Pantheon. Um, and I think, as Militus said, for those of you that have friends out there wondering why Pantheon, here's a great reason. So uh, thank you guys incredibly. Militus, once again, thank you. And we're out. Bye, guys.